thank you very much for your coming here and also for your interest both here in this room and also on the internet. Today we would like to give you our report concerning our fiscal year of 2019, but we would also like to provide you with an outlook for the challenges, but also the opportunities that we see for 2020. And microphone is gone. Turning, let's take a look at 2019. We did an awful lot, we achieved an awful lot, but but we had an awful lot of headwinds to overcome. It was really a very challenging year for us, but at the end of the day, we delivered on the promises that we gave you one year ago. Allow me, please, to begin by explaining that this successful year in 2019, the microphone, okay, this successful year has led to the new records we are looking at the 16th record year in sequence. Uh, apparently, I have to keep my finger, finger on the microphone. We'll figure out a solution here. So the 16th year in sequence, that turned out to be a record year. We had initially called it our year of investments for 2019 because we uh, had been able to identify a number of opportunities in the midterm range that for which we wanted to prepare ourselves. Some examples are home dialysis, as you've just heard in the presentation given to you by Fresenius Medical Care, but we also saw other opportunities with factory expansions or factory upgrades at Fresenius Kabi and the expansion of our biosimilars portfolio. And this is why we are particularly pleased by the fact that we were successful last year in being able to launch the first buyer similar called Idazio as its trade name in Germany. And one of my colleagues in the back of the room will be happy to provide you with more information concerning Idazio, what makes this product so special. And I would also like to emphasize the fact that that our entry into the Colombian hospital market has not only been successful, but we've also been able to push the envelope a little bit. Just yesterday, we were able to acquire the hospital, called the women's hospital in Bogota, uh, which is a very attractive market for us. If I now turn to 2020, then I would also like to ascertain that the zero growth at constant currency in our results doesn't sound all that much. Even if this is a very uh, sophisticated level, but uh, zero growth at constant currency is not the target that we set for ourselves. Nay, on the contrary, we are absolutely convinced that we will be able to achieve the turnaround to growth in earnings uh, this year. They will be a little bit below our midterm guidance, but as we said to you one year ago, we are expecting uh, an increase in our uh, growth in the coming years, not only, but also due to the bi biosimilars portfolio that Fresenius Kabi has. And this is why we are uh, see ourselves as being fully and completely confirmed with regard to our midterm targets, which is nevertheless still very am ambitious. Let me make a brief remark with regard to the coronavirus, which also does have an impact on us. First of all, what is very important for me to say to you here this morning is that despite uh, this huge workforce that we have in China, we have only had one single case among our employees in China where uh, the, uh, uh, this illness has been confirmed. This colleague is uh, on the way to improvement once again, thank God. With regard to the exposure of Fresenio's medical care, Reese Pyle has already stated that there might be some positive aspects, but there are surely also gonna be some negative effects for us as a result of this virus. The biggest exposure within the Fresenius group is Fresenius Krabi, however, namely, there is a serious, that is a reliable forecast concerning the impact of the coronavirus cannot be given yet. We have a couple of uh, production sites in China that 
have not been able to produce anything due to the extended New Year's festivities in China. So we have a huge sales force that that uh, are supposed to deliver the urgently needed uh, hospital supplies to the hospitals. And we also have to deal with a situation that access to the hospitals is very, very difficult. And also the supply chains in China are suffering from the impact of this virus. So many people are just working from their inventories. But on the other hand, most of the interventions in hospitals uh, or most of the surgical interventions in hospitals in China are of an elective nature. No patient is willing to approach a hospital for any reason unless they absolutely have to go into the hospital. So at least for the first quarter of this year, we are expect expecting certain losses in volume for uh, uh, the sale of products at Kabe. To what extent this is going to continue and to what extent uh, we will be able to see some compensatory effects throughout the remainder of the year, that is, refilling our inventories, our warehouses, and after people start choosing to have elective surgery once again. And I'd like to ask you for your understanding. I'm unable to provide you any further details in any reliable manner at this point in time. What I would like to indicate to you, nevertheless, is the fact that the effect at Fresenius Kabe and on the group level is not going to be a positive effect. However, uh, from today's standpoint, it's not going to be significant when we're talking about the net income of the group as a whole and the growth of the group as a whole. Turning now to the figures for 2019, you can see the growth rates here at constant currency, and you can see a very pleasing growth in earnings of 6%. And you can recognize here the number of uh, uh, adverse situations that we had to face with our net income with a slight uh, decrease in our EBIT of minus 2 percent. But I, what is very important for me to emphasize at this point is that nevertheless that we did grow to the same degree as we did in 2018 despite all of the difficulties that it had with uh, with a bit of the tailwinds from, with regard from the currency side of the port, namely the growth of dollars, that when we uh, showed you the adjust figure, adjusted figures, we are able to report a slight growth. And thus, we've been able to continue our record year. And you can see this on this slide. For the 16th year in sequence, we were able to drive our sales up and our net income up. And I, I believe that this speaks in favor of our tried and true model for success. And this is something that is going to continue to exist, for not only for the coming years, but for the coming decades. And if our earnings uh, rise, and of course our dividend also rises, our dividend policy even explicitly states that the growth of our dividend has to correspond more or less to the growth in sales, more or less. Uh, one year ago, we announced that apart from the fact that we would not be able to show you any significant growth in revenues, we would continue to uh, extend the series of increases in our dividends. And that's why we've uh, told uh, our uh, supervisory board that they then uh, propose an increase in the dividend of 0 0.84 euro cents, which would be the 27th consecutive increase in the dividends. And we've also seen some growth in our headcounts. Uh, towards the end of the year, it was 294,000 people approximately uh, due to the one or the other acquisition, but in particular due to our own organic growth. And I'm firmly convinced that we will be able to break through the target of 300,000 employees worldwide. Let us now turn to a few of the highlights of the individual uh, business segments. As Fr at Fresenius Kabe, I've just reported to you the successful launch of our biosimilar called Idacio uh, as a biosimilar. 
We have invested extensively, not only in the United States, but also in China, but also here in Europe as well, in the extension of our manufacturing capacities for the products that are so urgently needed. You can see that we are treating more and more patients, uh, and this is also due to our ongoing growth. And we're talking about clinical nutrition here in Europe and in China. Uh, this also involves an improvement in our manufacturing processes with regard to our uh, liquid medications, in particular in North America. And when I'm talking about improvements here, I mean more automation. And if I refer to automation, I do not mean automation for the purpose of reducing costs. No, we want to automate our manufacturing process for our medications where we are focusing on product quality, product reliability, uh, expressed by the utmost possible hygiene. And that means more automation. We can improve the sterility of our products and document this more importantly, and thus establish ourselves further as the most reliable supplier within this particular market. Uh, during the course of the year, in our North American business, we had to deal with a number of challenges. We were able to really in increase our sales growth in the year of 2017 and 2018. We saw growth rates of 8% or 10% in sales in these areas, driven primarily by uh, the phenomena of shortages. Our, our competitors were not able to deliver certain products, we were able to deliver these products, so we were able to acquire market shares th that we had no right to. And with the return of at least our biggest competitor throughout the course of 2019, as expected, of course, we had to give up some of this um, additional market share, and that, of course, has had an impact on our growth and sales. But on the other hand, the very positive development that we have seen in our emerging countries, particularly in our Chinese market, has had a very positive effect, where we see double-digit growth in sales in China. We continue to be the market leaders with the uh, 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 drugs uh, administered intravenously in North America. This market is going to continue to grow uh, structurally, and I'm firmly convinced of this, and this is going to continue to be a very attractive business for us, where we are going to continue to play a leading role. Allow me to also state that uh, about one year ago, we announced that we were going to be go subjecting our infusion and transfusion uh, business to a critical review, which was completed last summer with a convinced answer that we are going to hang on to this business. We have our own corporate division for this particular business. We now have the responsibility from the, uh, that has shifted from research and development all the way down to sales and delivery of these products. And that is why we believe that with these organizational changes, we will be able to make the most of this business and obtain even better results. And this morning, we also entered into a joint venture in ch with China concerning iron supplements with our big and with our big sales force in China. We are firmly convinced that we will be able to generate uh, proper growth in sales and that we will be better able to treat our patients in China as a result of this joint venture. And then very briefly, once again, to the coronavirus. I've already told you the most important news in this field, but allow me to uh, state that we are continuing to monitor the situation very closely. Uh, in my introductory remarks, I focused on the situation in China. We, too, are part of a global supply chain, and these supply chains, in our case, tend to be very long. So we have to uh, state that we have all sorts of precursors for particular uh, medicines come from China in particular. Our customers have uh, huge uh, inventories. We have good 
and huge overdose. But nevertheless, I have to point out to you the fact that the longer it takes for this situation to normalize, hopefully, the higher the risk is going to be that with individual products, we will run into certain shortages, unfortunately. Allow me to briefly refer to the situation at Helios. And there we have a mixed picture to present to you. We have certain compensatory effects at Helios in Germany after the year 2000. Uh, 18 didn't quite meet our expectations. We continued to have a very pleasing, sustainable growth in our hospital business in Spain. Uh, in 2018, however, and last year, we also um, uh, adjusted ourselves to changes in the regulations. We anticipated a higher percentage of ambulatory or outpatient treatments. We had anticipated the further introduction of minimum case numbers and thus focused on building up centers across our chain of hospitals in Germany. Occasionally, this cost us uh, certain case numbers or patient numbers, but nevertheless, we are convinced that we've taken the right steps for the future, and we are going to be pushing these measures a bit. Uh, the legislature did not make our lives any easier this year due to the fact uh, that they have taken out the nursing costs from the lump sum payments that we got. And we already pointed out to you in 2019 that this step taken by the law uh, will have an impact on our operating earnings, approximately a high double-digit million amount. And, and this is something that we will have to compensate for this year. Implicit in our outlook for 2020, you will see that we believe that we can compensate for this regulatory effect. However, we do definitely have to state that the starting point is definitely below zero compared to last year, and that this is going to mean a much bigger effort to uh, achieve the results of 2019. With the weight of Helios Deutschland in our group that is going to have an impact on the Fresenius growth with regard to achievable growth. We believe, however, that all of this will ultimately lead to a further consolidation of the hospital landscape in Germany. The numbers that have been mentioned occasionally continue to be very exaggerated from our point of view, but but there, but it but there is no doubt whatsoever that we have way too many hospitals here in Germany, and that the necessary nursing staff is being spread across these too many hospitals throughout Germany, and that overall we would be providing much better service to our patients if we were to uh, make more of an effort to consolidate the hospital landscape here in Germany. apart from our established uh, in-house patient uh, care in a hospital in Germany. We have continued to work on new business models. We have entered the field of prevention uh, based on the role model played by Spain. We're working in occupational medicine. We've developed a whole series of initiatives related to more digitization in the hospitals. My colleagues from Helios are here today and would be happy to show you what has been happening with our Helios patient portal. What is very, very important, as I've already mentioned, the urgently needed nurses. Last year, we succeeded in hiring our claim. Uh, that We said that this is the most important job in the world. That's our claim in the upper left-hand corner of this room. That's what the hospital is. We were able to hire approximately 1,300 new uh, nursing staff for us. And, and so we believe that we are well set up for the future as this first step. In Spain, we have once again seen strong growth this year. We acquired another hospital in the southeast of Spain in Albacete, and, and that is an excellent uh, complement to our network in this region. Our Lighthouse project, the Proton Ion Therapy uh, Center in Madrid, was opened up in 
Madrid, and we've treated our first patients there. This is the first and only center like this in Spain. I've already referred to Spain. As I said yesterday, we acquired another hospital in Bogota within a, a very short period of time, namely only 18 months, we have become a national market leader in Colombia. And you can see on this chart, if you go back a second, at the bottom right-hand side, you can see the, the clinic called Imbanaco. It is the third, in the la third largest city in Colombia. It's a very modern, wonderful hospital. I was there for the signing of the contracts with Francisco de Mayo, and I looked at this hospital. It's an exemplary hospital, in my opinion. At Vomit, we were also able to uh, see a very positive development last year. In June of 2018, we reported that we were going to transfer all of our rehab clinics from Helios in Germany to Vomit. Everything has happened very seamlessly, very smoothly. The patients have not had to suffer at all from this transfer. On the contrary, actually, uh, Vomit uh, focuses even more on rehab than, uh, than Helios, which tends to focus more on acute care hospitals. With this integration, we have now become one of the leading post-acute providers of care with VOMED in Europe. Another lighthouse project for VOMED was the modernization of the University Hospital in Schleswig-Holstein in northern Germany with a long-term uh, operation contract and the modernization of this hospital and we're talking about a volume of 1.7 billion euros for the modernization, is completed for the most part at its two sites in Kiel and Lübeck. In addition to that, we have also uh, a completed major important projects and major awards, and they are looking at record a backlog at the end of 2019 for this year. We not only build hospitals around the world, but we also were able to complete our new Fresenius campus as such. One year ago, we, you were able to see a, a construction site. Today, when you entered this building, you were able to see that in the background. We now have completed EK3 uh, uh, with places for approximately 750 uh, persons. Uh, we want to grow together. We want to provide modern office space and develop new concepts that are going to be implemented to pro promote even further collaboration amongst our employees. The one or the other of you might say, well, does it really necessary to, to expand our group overhead? I have really paid close attention to ensuring that only what was absolutely necessary was spent for this building. We're not talking about additional jobs, but of trying to merge uh, workplaces. It makes a particular economic sense, particularly when we aren't able to get any interest for our money because we are thus able to uh, reduce our, uh, our inventory of rental space. And that leads me to the outlook for 2020 with uh, uh, growth in sales of in a range of 4 to 7% at constant currency is what we expect that corresponds to the bandwidth that we also announced to you throughout the year of 2019, which we then ended with 6% at the end of the year. So you can recognize once again that we are again focusing on sustainable uh, growth and our products and our services continue to be in demand. Furthermore, we are, have been able to continue to make investments, as you can see, and we have had to deal with some adversities. Just for an example, the regulatory changes in the German hospital system that I've already mentioned, and that leads us to uh, 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 net income growth of one to five percent. And as I've already mentioned, we are firmly determined to return to the growth path that we had in the past. The fourth quarter of 2019, which already showed a growth in net income and thus brought us back to a, a so-called 
black zero, that we're fully in the black one again, is an indicator that we will be able to achieve this in 2020, indeed. So I'm, let me move back to the previous chart. And this leads to our midterm targets that we announced to you uh, last year and which we today wish to fully confirm. And you can see that our average annual sales growth f through from 2020 to 2023 will grow from 4 to 7%. And you will see that this coincides with the guidance for 2020. With regard to the annual earnings growth, we have higher expectations in the midterm, but this is precisely the way we communicated that to you last year, that is, over this period of time, namely from 2020 to 2023, we will be able to see earnings growth that will increase over the years. This is not only, but also due to the biosimilars portfolio at Fresenius Kabli, where we will be able to increase our market penetration with our new product called Idacio, but with other biosimilar products through this period of time that we wish to launch. And that is why the, uh, we will be able to achieve the uh, expected uh, break even by 2023, and that will lead to further growth in earnings on the group level. And now allow me to conclude with the issue of sustainability. We have always been a company interested in sustainability. I believe you all know this and you can all perceive this. Namely, we want we want to be able to treat more and more patients with even better products and services. And that means it doesn't make any sense not to engage in sustainable measures to do this. Overall, however, I believe that we can only become better if we really coordinate all of the many uh, initiatives that we have in all of our business segments, if we give them the right priority, and if we then jointly report on our efforts in the area of sustainability. That is another target that we set for ourselves. We have also formed a sustainability body, body that will report to me directly because we want to coordinate what we are going to be report to the outside world of what we are doing. Uh, we, have, we have always been dedicated and devoted to improving medical quality. You're, constantly reading about the increasing medical quality and medical care. And in Helios, we've introduced a system of systematic quality measurements and quality improvements in the German hospital system. As you know, our production quality at Fresenius Kabi is allowed us to supply certain products when others weren't able to do so. All of these are sustainability issues, and we will continue to focus our attention on these subjects. With regard to a number of employee initiatives, I've already referred as an example to Fresenius Helios. There, too, we are making every effort to continue to be an attractive employer, and we are focusing in particular on further training and basic training for our employees as well. And we're talking about corporate governance. Yes, I believe that with a KGAA, it's, it's never an uncomplicated situation, but nevertheless, there can be no doubt whatsoever that, that we also focus on the well-being of our shareholders, of course, with regard to our ecological footprint, you would also expect that we are not going to be leading the way in this particular area. Yes, the one or the other party is complaining that this room is a little bit too cold. I can't understand that, but nevertheless, I have heard this. But nevertheless, we're going to make every effort possible to focus more on renewable energies, to control the CO2 emissions. We are a growth company. And that is why we can 
you know, a focus on reducing uh, reducing our CO2 production doesn't make any sense, even if others might take away certain market shares. But uncoupling CO2 emissions from our growth and our commitment to produce less CO2 than, than uh, what our earnings are going to grow is something that we have firmly fixed on as a commitment for the future. And our uh, uh, management board remuneration will also be linked to this goal. and. And this is something that will already t have an impact for 2020 and 2021. And so, nevertheless, I can confirm that we have done a lot, but we haven't necessarily communicated everything as stringently as we could have, uh, and that is going to be a major task for this year. And in let me now come to the end of my remarks. And the key for us is the well-being of our patients and I say that at all of our town hall meetings, and I say that at our annual general meetings to our shareholders. The patient comes first, because if the patient feels better, then our employees will be doing better, our shareholders will be doing better, and this is something that we want to continue to improve. 2019 was a very challenging year. 2020 will also be a challenge, uh, but nevertheless, we are convinced that our economic success in this year will be even bigger than in the previous year. Thank you very much for your attention. Rachel and I are now more than happy to answer any questions that you might have.